Hi guys, I'm so excited that we are going to be doing a book review Friday. I used to do this series a while back if you're new to my channel and you don't know what I'm talking about, but I used to do a series called Book Review Fridays where every Friday I would review a book and tell you guys what I thought about it. I, ha I still have my playlist and all those videos available for you if you want to catch up and just kind of see what I'm interested in and see what my opinion is of the books that I'm reading. And I will link that playlist down below for you guys. But so that you know, I basically kind of stick to two styles of novels, historical romance, which is what we're going to be talking about today, and fantasy or future fantasy. Things like Twilight, Court of Thorns, Hunger Games, like I love all of those things. They're very, very fun for me to read. And I like to read things that are just generally exciting and happy, and that's just my cup of tea. So if you want me to do a review on the Court of Thorns series, which I know is really huge, I if they don't make that into a movie, I'm going to lose my mind. But it has been, honestly, my favorite that I've ever read in my entire life. So if you want me to do a, seri a, a book review of the Court of Thorns series, thumbs up, let me know. But today we are going to stick to historical romance and my favorite author, Joanna Lindsay. So if you have been with me so long that you've watched all of my book review Fridays, this is not new information to you, but if you are new to my channel, Joanna Lindsay is my favorite author, hands down. Just, oh my, so much so that I created an inventory. Yes, and if you follow me and subscribe to my vlog channel, you've seen me put this together. So go over there and um, check those videos out. But I created an inventory. If you want a full in-depth video on this binder system, let me know. But that's not what I'm trying to do in today's video. But basically, I love Joanna Lindsay so much, I own every single one of her books now. But how this came about is I wanted to know what books I owned that she has put out and what books I didn't. So that is how I started this. And then I started ordering a ton of books from eBay for very cheap, for like a couple bucks. And it was so much fun getting them in and marking them when I received them. And I even categorized them by uh, families or just series that she has written. So Joanna Lindsay is probably her, not probably, but her biggest, her biggest series that she's ever written is the Mallory series. And it's a family called the Mallory's and it's the one that she has the most the most of and you know i own them all and as you can see i wrote the series name at the top and i even printed out the cover art and then the sticker indicates that i own it the next step that i actually want to take in my inventory is start writing my thoughts about the book and kind of rank them uh you know kind of like one through five or like give it five stars or give it two stars or three stars so that um, I can easily reach for the books that I love the most. And I'm, I really actually, I'm even curious myself to know which of Joanna Lindsay's novels are like my top three, which I don't even know that I know yet because I've read so many. So that's what I'm in the process of doing. Anyway, I've got the Mallory series. And then this section here, this third section, has a bunch of separate little series. So Shepford Knights, she wrote two of those. So there's two in those series. And then Sharing Cross, she wrote one, two, three. And I love it because you fall so in love with the characters that she writes, you wanna know when they appear in another novel. This, these, the main characters here will appear somewhere in here. So absolutely love and adore how she writes. And then my third section has one-offs where they are not quite series yet, but you never know she could start turning some of these into series. As you can see, I'm not done with my inventory. I still have a lot of cover arts to print. But again, if you want a full in-depth on how I did all of this, then thumbs up or comment down below and let me know. So today we are going to be reviewing The Magic of You. And I'm forewarning you, this cover art is embarrassing, but here you have it, not at all by, mind you, how I pictured Warren Anderson, which is the main character, and Amy Mallory. That is not at all how I pictured Amy Mallory in my mind. Um, but, you know, I'm just not attracted to Fabio. That's not to say that he's not an attractive person to other people. By any means, it's just not my cup of tea. So that cover art's kind of like wah-wah. I wish they would really kind of up their game there. 
but the content I love. It's fabulous and it's a really fun and exciting story plot. Very, she wrote Amy Mallory completely different from how she's really ever written any of her female characters and that's what made this one really exciting and Warren Anderson as well. So let me give you a little background on how Amy Mallory met Warren Anderson. One of the one of her uncles, James, marries an American in another novel and that American woman had five brothers and one of them is Warren Anderson and the very first time that Amy ever saw him was in another novel and she was about 16-ish years old when she saw him for the first time and in this novel it tells you the backstory of how she saw him and knew the moment that she saw him he was the one she wanted. Now the Mallory's Joanna Lindsay writes historical romance for mostly European and she really is more so London based. So this was set in London in 1819, just so that you know, very, very historical periodic, you know, just a very specific time. Um, and she writes the fashion so well too, so that you really get an idea of, of their clothes and their colors. And she really does write to how things used to be done in London back in the day. And, and debutantes and going out into their first season and how when you were younger and unmarried you wore lighter pastel colors and once you were a married woman you wore darker more mature colors and she writes to that to that concept as well so in this book basically her uncle James who marries the American Georgina Georgina is having a baby and so all her brothers come from America to see her sister and that's when Warren comes back into Amy's life now a Amy just turns 18 and Warren is like 30 something so very interesting concept but back then that was not unusual at all so uh, and it starts off straight out the gate where Warren comes through those doors and the way that she writes Warren, you know he is just the most good looking, attractive, mysterious, tall drink of water, okay? I don't know how else to describe Warren Anderson. I have to say of all the men that she's ever written, Warren is probably one of my favorites. I feel like the way she wrote him, I would probably be attracted to him in real life. Now, if he looks like this, then I'm completely wrong. But I feel like if I met Warren Anderson down at the square or somewhere, you know, I don't know, African Chili's, I would be like, okay, you are the most attractive man I've ever seen in my life. So I absolutely adore how she wrote Warren. And he is, I believe, the eldest of all the Anderson brothers. So, and he's not the only Anderson brother to marry into the Mallory family, which is kind of funny. So, really exciting series. I have to say that if you've never read a historical romance or you're interested in getting started in the Joanna Lindsay sector, <laughs> uh, definitely go for the Mallory series. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Um, so Amy straight out the gate has she is officially almost 18 she's like 18 and in a week and she has her coming out ball that whole thing and she has a moment alone with Warren where they're looking at Georgina's baby that she just had with James and she they're by themselves and she's basically like yeah I'm gonna marry you and she is just flat out bold. She is bold the whole time and very, very different from how Joanna writes her other female characters. So Amy basically tells him the whole time, like, we're going to be together. You might as well accept it. Like, this is what's going down. And Warren has a past where with a woman who treated him very shady. So it it's that obstacle and trying to get Warren to see that a marriage isn't a horrible thing and that he would be really, really happy being married to her. And that's, that's basically the, the summary is he, there's a woman who jilts him basically and Amy falls in love with him and 
basically you know it he falls in love with her and it's really interesting to see someone who she writes is so stubborn and who's like i'm not gonna marry you but he instantly he instantly just stakes his claim on amy regardless if he realizes it or not he becomes very um like protective and it's it's the it's how joanna Lindsay writes her little ways and letting her audience know that her male character is in fact in love with the female character but he just doesn't know it yet so really good little ways that she's writing both of these characters it's just it's really funny because basically the majority of the book they have these little moments together and she doesn't tell her family because the Andersons hate the Mallorys. There's this whole thing, but you really do have to read the very first Mallory series to get that whole back and forth concept. And so Amy doesn't want to tell any of her uncle, so she keeps it on the down low, but eventually they do find out. And it's just really funny how she writes the Mallorys and the Andersons and how they fight with each other, but you know that that they still like each other. It's like that kind of bromance thing. They're like, oh, I can't stand you, but but uh, but but really, I'm glad we're family kind of thing. So it's really hilarious how she writes uh, Warren's relationship. And of all the Anderson brothers, Warren hates the Mallorys the most. So he he can't even believe it himself of like why he's even attracted to Amy in the first place because in his mind he's like oh I despise the Mallory so much but he really truly doesn't. Uh, so basically in most of this book Amy's they're having little moments together and Amy's telling him she's being very very bold and very honest and back then women just did not do that so it's hard being a woman in 2019 and reading this and being like what's wrong with what she just said taking charge telling someone how you feel but back in the 1800s it was just simply not done so you have to kind of take yourself back there and be in that mindset and it's just hilarious how amy just she's just so incredibly confident and they have these little moments and it's hilarious and he gets very jealous of things and very you know like i said protective of her it's it has a little twist because the woman who jilted him there's a very specific story behind that she jilted him because warren had a childhood friend who was very jealous of him so he got this woman to pretend to basically love warren and all of this stuff i'm not going to give that whole story away for you guys but it's really about his childhood friend or who's now his enemy and then when he finds out about this he's like oh i can kind of let go of this woman and you know i guess i was never in love with her or whatever he thinks i'm not sure but this guy moves in on amy and so warren is not having it he basically beats the crap out of him and then he goes to amy and he's very very stubborn warren is very stubborn and he goes to amy's like well i'm basically gonna leave for america and at that point at this point amy's just like well okay i'm giving up and you know why why continue to to try i've been really selfish only thinking of myself and not for you and warren is just like you're giving up on me don't give up on me and it's really cute how how they end up together so anyway, overall, my opinion of this is that this is probably one of my favorite, if not the favorite, Mallory series. Again, I don't know. I'm going to find out as I'm ranking these. But I have to say, I am giving this one five stars. So I'm ranking my stuff out of five stars, and this is definitely five stars for me. I know I went through that very, very quickly. But just to kind of recap, I love the way that she wrote Amy Mallory. She's very bold, very different from how she writes her female lead characters. I love how she wrote Warren. Maybe not my favorite, favorite male character. I'm going to find out again through discovering, reading all the books and, and ranking the book overall, ranking the characters overall. I have to say five stars for the book. I have to say for Amy, I would have to give Amy four or five stars i'm not sure where i'm gonna put amy and for warren i'd have to say i'd probably put warren at four 
four or five stars too. I, I, I'm really, I'm really not sure. So they're definitely up there in my, some of my favorite characters that she's ever written. And I absolutely love it. And I completely recommend the Mallory series and Joanna Lindsay in general. I will say there are a couple of novels that she's written that are not my cup of tea, uh, but they may be for somebody else. It very much reminds me a little bit of Outlander, which I know some of you have suggested for me to read. And I started watching the series on Netflix and I don't like it at all. Outlander is not for me. So I don't like the idea of a back and forth romance. I'm just not, that's not my, my thing. I, I like for the female to have a specific male lead and like that's it, not kind of wonder back and forth. Like Hunger Games was hard for me because I'm like obviously PETA. Obviously PETA. Somebody get Gail out the frame. I was the same way with Twilight. Why is everyone wearing Team Jacob shirts? Does anyone not realize it's completely Team Edward? Anyone else? Anyway, that's it for today's series. I hope that you guys go read Magic of You, go to your local library, or you could find this on eBay. I'll try to find it on eBay and link it down below for you guys or Amazon. And if you just love romance in general or historical romance, also just know that in terms of Fifty Shades of Grey, if I had to compare this to Fifty Shades of Grey, uh, it's not on that Fifty Shades of Grey level at all, but she does write intimate scenes. So just throwing that out there to let you know. Um, that's it. I hope that you guys love it. I hope that you read Amy and Warren's story and love it as much as I do. And if you have, comment, let me know your thoughts. If you haven't, but you have, but you've since read it, please come back to the comments and let me know what your thoughts are on Amy and Warren's love story. And leave me also suggestions on what you want me to review next. And I will see you guys maybe next Friday. Bye.